Archaeologist Mordecai Avium and his team are excavating a site in Israel near the Sea of Galilee. It's a location they've worked at for several seasons, and they've turned up some notable finds from the early centuries of the first millennium in the process. But now they come across a stunning mosaic floor from around 1,500 years ago, a discovery that has truly groundbreaking implications for biblical history. Archaeologists in Israel uncovered dazzling ruins that may well back up a biblical tale. The international team excavating at a site called El Araj has members from Israel's Kinneret College and Nyack College in New York City. Professor Avium from Kinneret heads the project with Nyack College's R. Stephen Notley being the academic lead. The 2019 dig already referred to was the group's fourth year working there. Even before the hugely significant discoveries of 2019, the team had already made some fascinating and important breakthroughs. Back in 2017, they uncovered a Roman bathhouse dating from between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD. And that find led Avium to believe that the El Araj site was the location of a key biblical site from the time of Jesus. Avium argues that the Greco-Roman metropolis where the bathhouse was located was Julia's. And Julia's had formerly been known as Bethsaida, which had started life as a modest fishing settlement on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Moreover, it's a location that features prominently in the Gospels of the New Testament and some of the best-known incidents in the life of Jesus Christ. El Araj is situated to the north of the Sea of Galilee, not far from the point at which the River Jordan flows into it. Although it's called a sea, it is in fact a lake about 13 miles in length and 8 miles across. It's notable for the fact that it lies some 690 feet below sea level. The Sea of Galilee also holds an important place in the story of Jesus. According to the Gospel of Matthew, Christ met three fishermen, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and recruited them as disciples. He told them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Shortly afterwards, Jesus found two more fishermen, James and John, who also became his followers. We'll come back to the biblical significance of Galilee a little later, but first let's find out more about the long-abandoned city of Bethsaida. It was originally a simple fishing settlement, but round about the year 30 AD the ruler Herod Philip II, also known as Philip the Tetrarch, made an important change to the fishing village's status. Philip declared that Bethsaida was now a polis, meaning that he recognized it as a fully-fledged city, a far cry from a mere fishing hamlet. We know about this as it's included in the writings of the first-century Romano-Jewish historian, Titus Flavius Josephus. As well as upgraded status, Bethsaida received a new name. Julia's. This was in tribute to the Roman Emperor Augustus's spouse Julia Augusta. In addition, it was around this time, when Bethsaida became Julia's, that Jesus spent time in and around the city according to the Gospels. We've already mentioned the first biblical event relating to Bethsaida when Jesus recruited three fishermen from the village, Peter, Andrew and Philip. The Gospel of John covers this. According to John, the next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. As we've already heard, those were the first three of Jesus's disciples. Moreover, in addition to proving a successful recruiting location for Jesus, Bethsaida was also the scene of two of his miracles. There's the miracle of the blind man of Bethsaida, which is only described in the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus was in the town when he met a man who was entirely blind. Mark records that they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees, walking Mark continues. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. But the second miracle that Jesus performed at Bethsaida is by far the better known. This miracle is known as the feeding of the 5,000. According to the book of Luke, the disciples met Jesus after traveling through various towns preaching the gospel. Luke describes what happened when the disciples were reunited with Christ. Then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. At this site, a gathering of people anxious to hear Jesus' message quickly grew to a great number. 
According to Luke, the apostles now implored Jesus, send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding towns and country, and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. Jesus's words clearly puzzled his disciples, and they answered we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all these people. Luke records that there were 5,000 people now present, so the apostles' protestations seem reasonable enough. But Jesus told his disciples to sit the crowd down in groups of 50. Luke describes what Jesus did next. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and twelve baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. It's worth noting that while each of the Gospels mentions the feeding of the 5,000, only Luke locates it in Bethsaida. So there you have it. Bethsaida was not only the hometown of three of the disciples, but it was also the scene of two miracles. It's not hard to see why this town is of great significance to biblical scholars and Christian alike. Nevertheless, the fact is that the actual location of Bethsaida was lost in the mists of time for many centuries. We've heard that the historian Josephus mentioned it in the 1st century AD. There's then a gap of some seven centuries before the next documented reference to the town. That came in a chronicle known as the Hodoporican and produced by a female Anglo-Saxon cleric named Huniburk. The words were dictated to her by Willibald, the Bishop of Eichstätt, a city that's in the modern-day German region of Bavaria. Although he was a bishop in Germany, Willibald was actually English, and he seems to have had a taste for travel. He's believed to have been the earliest Englishman to explore the Holy Land, in fact, reaching Jerusalem in 725. What's of interest in this story is that the bishop also visited Bethsaida and wrote of a church he saw there. We'll come back to that building a little later. It seems that the Bethsaida, or Julia's, became deserted later in the 8th century. This may be connected to the fact that the region suffered a major earthquake in 749, but there is no firm evidence that this is so. At a later date, it appears that crusaders took Bethsaida and that it was a place of pilgrimage in the 12th century. But after that nothing more is heard of the city and its location was lost to posterity. Then, in 2014 Professor Avium and his colleagues began to excavate the site at El Araj, that they've identified as being the location of Bethsaida, however, there was a prior claim dating back as far as the mid-1800s that locates Bethsaida at a different place called Etel. It's a little over a mile from the rival El Araj site. Moreover, the Bethsaida Excavations Project, a team of archaeologists led by Dr. Rami Arab of the University of Nebraska at Omaha, has been investigating Etel ever since the late 1980s. And Arav and his colleagues are certain that their site is the true location of ancient Bethsaida as described in the New Testament. Researchers working at the Etel site have found evidence of occupation dating back to the 9th century BC, during the Iron Age. They've also uncovered remains from the Greco-Roman period of the 2nd century AD. Among these finds are fishing implements and anchors, evidence that there was a fishing village at the Etel site. Speaking about the discoveries at El Araj, in 2017 Arab informed the Times of Israel that the rival team's uncovering of some evidence of Roman occupation is not enough to identify a place with Bethsaida, there are some more requirements which the dig at El Araj thus far failed to provide. And Aram had his own idea of what the finds at El Araj might represent, which we'll describe in a moment. So, there's a dispute in the archaeological world when it comes to the location of Bethsaida. Two teams of researchers claim to have found the true site of the biblical village in different areas. Arav does have an explanation for the finds at El Araj, though. Indeed, he asserts that it was a second and later location for Bethsaida. Arav explained his theory to the Times of Israel. I suggested long ago that El Araj became Bethsaida in the Byzantine period, 4th to 6th centuries BC, after a geological disaster pushed the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee further south he said. In this period, the fishermen at Etel abandoned their site because it became too far from the lake and moved further south to the seashore. So the great-great-grandchildren of the first century Bethsaida moved 300 years later to their new location at El Araj. Perhaps they called it New Bethsaida Arava continued. 
but Professor Notley, from the team working at El Araj, doesn't accept the idea that there were in fact two Bethsaidas and rejects the idea that the town moved location. In fact, Dr. Notley doesn't believe that Etel is a likely site for Bethsaida at all. He's pointed out that 1.5 miles of dry land lie between the shores of the Sea of Galilee to Etel. And he believes that this means it cannot have been a fishing settlement in biblical times. So, the dispute about Bethsaida's location seems unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. But we'll leave behind that academic feud for the moment and return to the El Araj site and the work that has gone on there since 2014. As we've seen, investigations by Dr. Avium and his colleagues had turned up evidence of a Roman city. Notably, they'd found the ruins of a Roman bathhouse in 2017. Also in 2017, the team uncovered a layer that contained evidence of a time when crusaders had been at El Araj. The researchers found ruins of a sugar processing facility dating from the 1100s that they believe belonged to the crusaders. Moreover, below that was evidence of Bethsaida in Byzantine times in the shape of a coin. The team also discovered various pieces of Roman porcelain dating from between the 1st and 3d centuries AD. The excavation of 2018 uncovered more evidence of the Roman polis, Julius, that was located at the site of Bethsaida at El Araj. The objects included pieces of red fresco, which indicate that this was a fairly opulent Roman settlement. Avium and his team also found fragments of a particular kind of oil lamp, known to have been used by Jews. What's more, the 2018 dig uncovered lead weights of the kind that would have been used with fishing nets, reinforcing the idea that the El Araj site was indeed the location of a fishing village. Of course, the Bible describes the town of Bethsaida as being just that. But it was the 2019 dig that produced the most exciting evidence yet found at this site. To fully recognize the importance of the 2019 find, we need to travel back in time to 725. This was the year that Willibald, whom we heard about earlier, visited the Holy Land. Part of his trip involved a walk along the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Avium described this event in an interview with the Biblical Archaeology Society's website. Of course, we have the testimony of an 8th-century Christian traveler named Willibald, who walked from Capernaum to Kersey, and says he passed through a place called Bethsaida, in which there was a church of the apostles Avium said. Moreover, a senior cleric called Theodosius wrote in the 6th century that Capernaum was around 6 miles from Bethsaida. Furthermore, some experts have said that this church at Bethsaida had a very special status indeed. Indeed, it's said to be constructed on top of the very house where two of the apostles that Jesus recruited in Bethsaida, Peter and Andrew, lived. Speaking in 2019 to Israeli newspaper Haaretz about this claim, Notley said, it's the historical tradition we possess, and there is no good reason to question it. Speaking to the AFP press agency in 2019, Avium said, we excavated only one-third of the church, a bit less, but we have a church, and that's for sure. And he's also certain that the church they found in 2019 is the one mentioned by Willibald. Between Capernaum and Kersey there is only one place where a church is described by the visitor in the 8th century, and we discovered it the professor asserted. So, this is the one. But what exactly did the team unearth that reveals that a church stood at the El Araj site? During the 2019 season's dig, the researchers uncovered the southern section of the church, which they believe was part of a larger monastic complex. And some of the evidence they uncovered points to a church that was richly decorated. This evidence includes a piece of a marble screen and a number of gilded tesserae, which are the small tiles used to make mosaics. There was also a spectacular and partially intact floor mosaic that's surprisingly intact. The plan is of a church, the dates are Byzantine, the mosaic floors are typical avium told the times of Israel. Chancel screens, everything that is typical of a church. As yet, the church hasn't been definitively dated, although the evidence of a large number of coins found at the site points to a construction date during the 5th century AD Notley does sound a note of caution about the find, though. Speaking to Haaretz in 2019, he said that more evidence was needed. It would be normal to find an inscription in a church of the Byzantine period, describing in whose memory it was built, for instance he added. Avium, meanwhile, believes that this evidence confirms El Araj is the true site of Bethsaida. We have a Roman village. 
In the village we have pottery, coins, also stone vessels which are typical of first century Jewish life, he told the Times of Israel. So now we strengthen our suggestion and identification that El Araj is a much better candidate for Bethsaida than Etel. Perhaps predictably, Professor Arab disagrees. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.